Hello everyone, welcome back. Today we're going to be starting chapter 13 where we talk all about RNA and proteins. Uh, and in lesson one today we'll be talking about RNA. I uh, didn't post the objectives or key terms, but by the end of this lesson you should be able to tell me what RNA is, uh, how it is created, and how it's different than DNA. And all the key terms should be in bold throughout the lesson. So we're going to start out talking about what is RNA. Okay, so RNA stands for ribose nucleic acid. Uh, and you can think of it as a really super close relative molecule of DNA. So let's compare the two. Okay, so there's three different things uh, about RNA which we should know about. Okay, so the sugar in RNA is ribose instead of deoxyribose. And that's why we have RNA instead of DNA. Generally, and most of the time for what we'll talk about, RNA is a single-stranded molecule, not double-stranded. Uh, and finally, RNA contains the nucleotide uracil in place of thymine, okay? So these two strands here, uh, the one on the right here is going to be DNA, uh, and we can tell this because it's a double helix, two strands, and it also has the nucleotide base pair T, thymine in it. Uh, and this one is going to be RNA because it's a single strand, as we can see, and it has uracil in it instead of thymine. All right, so these are three major differences between DNA and RNA. So like we said, RNA is a nucleic acid which is very similar to DNA and plays a, a crucial important cellular life. Okay, so to start off, or to keep talking about RNA, uh, the roles played by DNA and RNA are similar to master plans and blueprints used by builders or engineers. So if you've ever driven by a construction site or seen someone building a house, uh, or maybe you've just heard of it and seen it in textbooks, you'll see things called blueprints, right? Which are uh, kind of like rough copies um, which construction workers bring to a site that tell them how to build something, tell them how to build a house uh, or a building or a road or something like that. And that's different than a, a master plan, right? Which is a big idea engineers come up with in an office and architects and lots of thinking and planning on how to do something, right? So we could have a master plan for a building, um, which is somewhere safe. And then we have blueprints, right, which are printed off and given to all the different construction workers and engineers and landscapers to go and build something. So DNA and RNA are exactly the same thing, right? DNA is kind of like the master plan uh, because it stays safe in eukaryotes in the nucleus uh, and is the master plan. It doesn't leave the nucleus. It doesn't go to the work site like these blueprints here with all these different people to go do jobs. Um, whereas RNA is really just a copy of the master plan, right? We see here in this copy machine, blueprints are made off this master plan on how to build something. So RNA is kind of a copy or a blueprint off the master plan DNA, uh, because RNA, we can, make many, it's, we can make many copies of that single DNA and send it out to go do stuff. Uh, go to the cytoplasm where it'll be used uh, to make proteins and for to do different cellular processes. All right, so understanding the difference between DNA, DNA and RNA is important, right? DNA is a master plan, RNA is a blueprint, a copy that leaves the nucleus to go out into the cell and do things, okay? So now we're going to start talking about the functions and different types of RNA. So RNA can actually have a variety of functions, but the most important one, most common one, and the one that we'll be talking about is it's used to make proteins, right? And this goes back to that one of the central idea of uh, biology that we talked about, uh, which is DNA to RNA to protein, right? The DNA uh, makes a copy, right? This is the master plan, makes a copy into a blueprint called RNA, which then goes and turns and makes into protein, okay? Um, so let, let's talk about these three types of RNA. The first one we have is called messenger RNA, all right? And in messenger RNA, this is literally a direct copy of the DNA strand, okay? Uh, and this messenger RNA, which would be this first example here, and we'll just label it as mRNA, its job is to leave the nucleus, okay? So the messenger RNA is going to leave the nucleus, uh, with those plans that DNA has safe inside the nucleus, and goes out into the cytoplasm, finds a ribosome, and tells it how to make a protein. Okay, and again, as we see, we don't have thymine in RNA. We replace that with a letter called U for uracil. 
All right, the second part we have is ribosomal RNA or R RNA. Now, ribosomal or R RNA is actually a copy or like a, a little segment of RNA that's found in ribosomes, right? And we know ribosomes are an organelle that make proteins. Okay, and the job of the ribosomal RNA is to, in the ribosome, which is represented by this blue little bob right here, right, tiny organelle, uh, in the ribosome we have different segments uh, of RNA, RNA, like this one, uh, which are going to help uh, order the amino acids, right, collect the amino acids, which are building blocks of proteins, and put them in order. So we have many different types of ribosomal RNA inside a ribosome, and again, their job is to put the amino acids in the correct order according to the messenger RNA from the DNA. So we kind of have this sequence here. Okay, and the ribosomes are made up mostly of ribosomal RNA as well as proteins, okay, and, and up to about 80 different proteins make up ribosomes. So the second one, ribosomal RNA, like we said, is amino acids, linking them together according to the mRNA all right, to make the proteins. And finally, the last one we have is transfer RNA, or tRNA. Okay, and trans transfer RNA, or tRNA, is going to actually be doing the heavy lifting of building proteins, okay? This is what actually takes the amino acids, labeled by this little green ball right here, uh, and puts them in the correct order to start to build this protein chain according to the nucleotides, right, the chunks, and different codes we have of the RNA, right? So again, this kind of goes from that ribosomal RNA, which is then literally like taking the device of this tRNA, right, which has the amino acids, and places the amino acids together, right, to start building a chain of amino acids, which eventually turns into the protein. So these are the three major types of RNA, okay? We have the messenger RNA, which leaves the nucleus and is, is a copy of the DNA. We have the ribosomal RNA, which is part of a ribosome uh, and helps read this mRNA to make the amino acid chain, polypeptides, and form a protein. And then we have the tRNA, the transfer RNA, which is literally the physical laborer or worker which takes amino acids and puts them in order. Okay, so this begins this process of transcription. Okay, so transcription is this process of taking the DNA, transcribing it into RNA. Uh, and if we think about when we talked about DNA replication, right, we said there was three enzymes, one of which was DNA polymerase, okay, and DNA polymerase, we said, was the enzyme that literally took nucleotides, right, and built these long nucleic acids uh, made up of A, T, C, and G, which gave us a DNA code. So we have a very similar one in transcription called RNA polymerase, okay, and as you can guess, this enzyme does the same thing. So we can see an example here in this representation of the nucleus where we have the DNA strand right here in blue, and we can tell because it's two strands, and we have this little yellow enzyme called RNA polymerase, uh, which is actually doing this process of transcription or creating the RNA based off the DNA. And really what happens is, unlike DNA replication, transcription is only one step, okay? Because with this one enzyme, RNA polymerase, first it splits the DNA in half, right? It breaks apart these two strands by breaking the hydrogen bonds between nucleotides. And as well as splitting, it also copies the genetic information by traveling in just one direction, okay? So it's going to travel in one direction down the DNA molecule and begin reading the nucleotides in DNA, adenine, cytosine, guanine, uh, and thymine. And it's going to approach the appropriate or complementary nucleotide and to the new RNA molecule, which we see down here in orange. So this RNA polymerase is a cool enzyme because it does the job of both DNA helicase and DNA polymerase in uh, DNA replication. Okay, So it goes along, it splits, and it, it pairs the complementary information, uh, which again, we said, is important because no matter which nucleotide you have, Right, because they are complementary and only A can go with T and C can go with G, uh, we have the same information still. But just remember, in this RNA molecule, there is no thymine, right? There is no T. We only have uracil instead of thymine. So a uracil is going to pair 
with an adenine. All right. And then finally, this RNA polymerase, well, where does it begin to begin copying a section of DNA, right? Because remember, these DNA molecules are long, okay? There could be thousands of genes on one, uh, one chromosome in a DNA molecule. And it begins with an area called a promoter. Okay, and a promoter is actually just a segment of the DNA. Let's pretend it starts right here. Okay, it's a segment of the DNA which has a specific code that tells the RNA polymerase, start here. Okay, it's a big start here sign. Um, and that RNA polymerase is going to read that code and then begin, begin transcription and copying this DNA into an RNA molecule at an area called a promoter. All right, so transcription, not a very complicated process, but again, a lot of moving parts and some very complicated enzymes like RNA polymerase that come into making it work and creating an RNA molecule, which is again a copy uh, of this DNA molecule. Okay, so even though, so we created RNA now through the process of transcription and copying DNA, but we actually can have some editing that goes on of the RNA after it is copied. Okay, just like when you write a paper, um, that first draft isn't the best. Same thing when you create an RNA, RNA molecule. That's not going to be the final product most of the time. And we can actually cut sections out. So portions that are cut out of the RNA molecule and thrown away are called introns. And the remaining pieces are called exons. All right, so as we see here, if we look at this picture, let's pretend this is a section, uh, a chunk of RNA, a pre-RNA, an mRNA molecule. Okay, and again, so don't forget, these are long codes of nucleotides. There's no T, there's U, so maybe it's U, A, C, G, G, U, right? A long code all along here. Um, and we have, you can see, exon 1, intron, exon 2, intron, exon 3. What's actually going to happen uh, is something called a spliceosome will actually take these introns and kind of cut them out, okay? Think about it like taking a pair of scissors and making a cut here, making a cut here, making a cut here, making a cut here. So there's all this green stuff, this intron, is taken out of the RNA. And then, just like uh, maybe you might cut up a, uh, some clothes and then sew them back together to make them shorter, right? These extra parts called the exons, uh, which are the parts that are kept, are then sewn back together. And we see here at the bottom, right, we now have two parts. We have this intron, which was the green stuff we didn't need, separate, and then we have the three exons are nice and close together, right? Just when you write a paper, uh, you take out all the stuff you don't need, any extra sentences that might make it sound worse, and you throw them away and you're up with a nice clean paragraph, okay? So that's the difference between and introns and exons. So a great question is, why does this happen, okay? Why do our cells and, and all types of life uh, have introns then in the RNA that are thrown away, right? Why is a cell going to waste energy in ATP to power the RNA polymerase to make a copy of this intron piece to then just throw it away? Uh, well, there's, there's really two reasons, right? We're not really sure why. One of which uh, could be that it just evolved that way, right? That was the way it was created when the system first evolved millions of years ago, okay? Uh, another reason is that it actually allows you to make different combinations of your RNA, right? So maybe if I only took out one intron, right, and then I had exon 1, exon 2, intron, exon 3, right, that could create different proteins. So one reason could be diversity of proteins, right? You can take the same sequence of RNA, and by taking out different introns, instead of making one protein, you can make five or six proteins. All right, so that's one reason for uh, this RNA editing and taking out introns. Another reason it may happen is because it's just evolutionary or a part of evolution in, in making evolution happen, right? By this, by, by taking out introns, we may create better proteins uh, or better RNA molecules, which may give an organism an advantage over another one. Uh, and this goes back to this idea of evolution, okay, that one organism through, act, through natural selection uh, is going to have an easier time and a better advantage to living, and this will make its genes go on further. All right, so these are two possible reasons for why this RNA editing can happen. 
All right, so that's the end of this lesson in RNA and transcription. Uh, so make sure you review everything. I definitely watch this over quite a bit of moving parts here. Feel free to shoot me any questions if you have them. Either uh, email me or you could always tweet at me. All right, kids, so I hope you have a good one and uh, talk to you soon. Peace out.